Why are you playing the victim here? Trying to choke my small university. I don't like this part. I don't like this part. I don't understand what he had to say that. I don't get it. The people of the province are amongst the first Europeans to arrive in North America. True. It's a province which voted not once, but twice on whether it should leave Canada. And True. both times, it narrowly failed. Both time it was very, very, very close. First time was uh, the bigger margin for the no, but second time I think it was something like 49 and 51 percent. So close, so close. With their national holiday coming up in a few days, let's talk about Quebec. Well, this video is from uh, June 21st, so yeah, our national holiday is on uh, June 24th, uh, and uh, it's actually called the Saint Jean Baptiste, which is. Uh, for some of you, you might understand why I like this holiday. Our national holiday is called the Saint Jean Baptiste. For well over twelve thousand years. Oh, I'm just go back a little bit. On in has been back has been living as a step back. Okay, good, good, good. Wait, is is this like learning? Yeah, it is. It is pizza. I told you I was doing Hi, something a little bit different back. today. Subscribe, hit the bell notification. To <laughs> Professor Veg. Get history every week. <laughs> This region, which would become Quebec, has been lived upon in some form or another for well over 12,000 years. Its vast territory occupied by a large variety of societies from several diverse nations banded together in the Haudenosaunee, called by the French the Iroquois Confederacy in the south, to Inuit people living in Quebec's frozen north. Uh, we're taking a look at the history of my province, Quebec, and hopefully why uh i'm gonna try to have you understand why at some times a bunch of people wanted to separate from canada i think this is gone i think this is not something that's gonna happen anymore i think this is something of the past but it's important history and it's why uh many people in quebec still feel they have a very distinct culture from the rest of canada so i hope this uh it broke uh, when was the vote to recent secession vote? I don't call it secession. I call it separation. Uh, I don't like the word secession. But it was in uh, 1995. 1995. The first one was in uh, 1980. That was, uh, I think, so something like 60-40 for the no. And the one in 95, I remember, because I, uh, I was nine years old at the time. Uh, so we're going to learn why everyone thinks Quebec is Tash. Yeah, pizza, no. No, that's not that's not what I meant. Not at all. At least 10 indigenous nations that we know about lived in this region. What we know about this period comes from a mix of archaeological evidence Silver. and the oral traditions passed down to the nations that lived here. The first people to arrive in Quebec came around the year 11,000 BCE. 11. The people oh, who Vikings. entered are still quite a mystery. Only a few pieces of archaeological evidence shows that they existed at all. Were Paleolithic people direct ancestors of some of the first souls to cross yeah. oh. the Bering Strait land bridge from Siberia, give or take a few centuries? But that's from the east side, west side. That means they walked all this way to Quebec. I think maybe he's talking about just Canada at overall. So his teacher's pet. Also, if it can be my pet, I'll go with that. The Quebec they called home would be alien to us today. This was still the age of mammoths, giant sloths, and all that. Quebec, however, was still mostly covered in glaciers in this period. It was not until they began to retreat about 10,000 years ago that the population would increase in a meaningful way. With the retreating of the glaciers, the climate so far of behind, Quebec though. began to become a bit more hospitable. We see this connected to a population increase in the region. The Iroquois and Algonquin-speaking peoples began to show up in the province in this era. We find specialized tools such as fishing hooks from this period. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for mm -hmm. many thousands of years though before farming came to Quebec. So we had two the most two most tribes we know uh, of um, Native Americans were the uh, Iroquois and the Algonquin. Uh, in English I think like you said it says Iroquois and Algonquin I think but we say the French way here. And of course when the first uh, colonists from France and and uh, the other side of the ocean came, 
they clashed a lot with the uh, with the natives. I think it's uh, very similar to the story you had guys in the United States. So I think this is not uh, this is not going to be very different. This part is probably going to be something you guys from the United States uh, are familiar with. I'm going to make your TikToks feed be all Quebec. You want? You want? <laughs> The first farms seeming to show up around 1300 years ago with significant crops made of beans, corns, marrow, and sunflowers. Sometime in the 12th century, legendary figures Hiawatha and Deganawita, along with a partially century. unknown figure named Jigon Sase, formed an alliance between five tribes. So that's pretty much farther in the uh, in the past that I know. I've, like I told you earlier, I, I've studied history, and when I was in. Um, college what i wanted to do at the time was become a history teacher ah uh, god as the mighty has fallen right so some things change a lot now i'm uh, doing some streaming who knows maybe we could uh, someday do some uh, more history streams and i'm gonna go back to my dreams but yeah uh this is much farther so when i was studying story a study uh, history was like the latest two 200 the years mohawk onondaga this is Oneida, pretty much new Cayuga. to me and Gonna have Seneca. to trust this guy. The first story of the founding of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy will be sidelined for this video because it's a bit more of an upstate New York story, but also because I think it should be its own video. Comments if you want that. Now let's talk about the first it's Europeans to arrive a video in on his channel right now. Sometime shortly after the first there you go. voyage. Oh, Christopher Columbus. Okay, that, that's that's the part of the story. Of be Christopher Columbus down in the Caribbean, a French sailor brought back several captured indigenous people indicating that there was land in the northern Atlantic. A French explorer named Jacques Cartier took up this interest. Fun fact, there's a uh, one of the most famous bridge and one of the biggest bridge we have, the most important bridge. It's called the, uh, ja the Pont Jacques Cartier, the uh, Jacques Cartier Bridge. So yeah, a lot of these names, if you guys ever came to Quebec, you probably recognize all these names that we're gonna have from landmarks, from roads, from bridges, from statues, from even from cities. Trust me, this is important. There's a thousand streets and buildings named after him in Quebec. But there you go. See, ah, see, I'm not a liar. I'm not a liar. I just told you and he confirms it. So this guy is good. This guy is good. Uh, landmines. I see a lot of treachery in this chat. It's not time to be traitor yet. We didn't speak about the French English wars. On June 24th <laughs> of 1534, he and his crew landed in the modern day Gaspe Peninsula and east in side. a very European fashion, claim the entirety of other people's territory as the property of the King of France. The next... Uh, yeah, that happened a lot of this time, right? ...year he sailed to locations such as modern-day Quebec City and Montreal, meeting the St. Lawrence Iroquoian people living there. Over the next six years, the French government didn't do much, not seeing colonization of the region as a top priority. For a few years, it was just a place where fishermen would go for cod and whale oil. They would trade their metal goods with the indigenous people of the St. Lawrence for fancy furs. Some would say they would scam them from fancy furs. Uh, and uh, I don't know, it was not there at the time, but apparently the trades were pretty much one-sided. Which would renew interest in the region. Smelling profit, King Francois gave a French noble named... Oh boy... Jean-François de la Roque de la Roberval. Jean-François de la Roque de la Roberval. There you go. I'm going to say, I'm going to correct the guy. Jean-François de la Roque de la Roberval. The task of setting up a colony in these lands he called New France. He failed at the job, yeah. and it wouldn't be until the year 1608 Quebec City would be founded by Samuel de Champlain. Samuel de Champlain. <laughs> that's going to be it's going to be a, a full-time job just uh, correcting the the way he pronounces the names. Samuel de Champlain, who is the founder of our capital city, it's called Quebec. Uh, the capital city of the Quebec province is called Quebec, so how original, isn't it? Another person many things are named after in Quebec. It was the yeah. first attempt to make a permanent settlement. Now, this was not your typical colonization story at first. The juice of this colony would be the trade of furs, especially beaver furs, which were becoming Beavers. all the rage back in Europe. Some of the most common people to operate here were freelance traders and hunters called les coureurs des bois. Les coureurs des bois. Les coureurs des bois are the uh, guys who you can see with uh, tradition depicted with the uh, beaver hats, 
with a long musket and big and they were just going into the woods and uh, trying to get some uh, beavers and to get the first back to Europe. There wasn't much official exploration, but many of these freelancers go. did it themselves. That being said, its remote location and lack of local knowledge made the first few years pretty deadly. A lot of the most valuable land taken by the crown was passed on down to the Catholic Church. While many English people crossed the Atlantic to get away from feudalism, in New France, the church more or less transplanted it. It was a system of people working their land under something called the seigneurial system. Because of yeah. this, for a lot of Quebecois history, the Catholic Church would be extremely powerful. So that's that's how, uh, if you even look at the map or area view of Quebec right now, you can see all the farms and most of the lands are still right now uh, divided that way. You had the, uh, as it says here, the mill in the middle. You had the seigneur, seigneur means the lord. So you had like the, the lord of a uh, little little area. It was not feudal. It was a uh, uh, seigneurie. It's uh, different. And you had uh, always a little bit of church, if I remember correctly, because the church had a very, very strong grip on people at the time. Once again, I don't think it's a especially French Canadian thing. It's I think it's it was pretty, pretty there, uh, pretty much grasping at everything at the time, everywhere. I think it was pretty much the same in the USA, but in the US, I think it was a different kind of church. The colony had some difficulties keeping active. A war in England blocked supplies down the St. Lawrence River, and they even lost the territory to the English for a few years before peace yep. could be restored. Yep. By the end of the 1600s, there were under 20,000 French settlers all the way from the Mississippi to Newfoundland. A little over half of them were farmers. Many came Quebec only for a few seasons at to the time. fish and trade furs and then go back to France. Go back Women home. rarely crossed, and those who did were mostly nuns. It got so bad, the king had to incentivize and pay for about 800 young French women to go over with hopes they'd get yeah. married and convince people to stay in New France. They call them the filles du roi, meaning the girls of the king in English. They had a bunch of uh, women that they sent just to uh, just to be bred, I guess, and just to, uh, to have the population. Times were much different by then, different by then, right? There are a lot of legends about these girls, and claiming lineage to these filles du roi, or the king's daughters, is Fizu. a small part of having real French-Canadian cred. Kind of uh, feel a bit smart today. I, I kind of say everything he's about to say before he does. Uh, Sending pretty girls to the guys, stay there. Yeah, yeah. Send pretty girls to the guys, stay there. That's that's pretty much it. It's uh, another kind of exploitation, I guess. Which history is full of, sadly. Still... New France existed as a backwater place only good for sending resources back to France. The story was very different down south. By the mid-1700s, the British had grown their North American colonies into pretty much its own country. Yeah. New France had 10 times the size of those 13 colonies, but only about one-tenth of the population. So let's, uh, let's look at this map here. I'm com um, I want to see. So what do we have? British, British, uh, British is red here. Spanish, so oh, Spanish. This is Florida, right? Flor Florida is Spanish. Oh, didn't know that. Uh, and uh, British here, and we have disputed territory. So yeah, all these things. So Quebec French territory was going very, very far at the time. Uh, you can see here the uh, the line. That's where Quebec is right now. So I don't know if my mouse is uh, showing. I just want to uh, I'll just take a look to make sure my mouse is showing. No, it doesn't capture my cursor. Okay, there we go. Now it should. Oh, this video not playing. Shit, what did I do? Okay, uh, I think I messed it up. I'm just gonna go back a little and make sure it works. As those 13 colonies, but only about one tenth of the population. This was the situation video? when France and England went to war in 1754. No, video is not showing anymore. What did I do? What did I do? Ah, there you go. This. Okay, good, good, good. I thought I messed it up. And we're back. Global conflict called the Seven Years' War, or French and Indian War to the Americans, would f only about one-tenth of the population. 
This was a situation when France and England went to war in 1754. This global conflict called the Seven Years' War, or French and Indian War to the Americans, would feature several significant battles in Quebec. With control of the Atlantic, the British were able to overpower the French in North America. It came to a head with a massive siege of Quebec City. Oh, uh, Pisa, what we're talking about, it was at the time, uh, population was not growing here, and it was pretty bad for because most of the people that were going through the sea and coming here in Quebec were mostly males and uh, people working in the woods, and the population was not growing a lot, and people were getting sick and dying. So at a time, the king of France rounded up a bunch of, uh, of girls and just decided to... Oh, I just got back. Okay, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> so what the, friend, what the king did, he rounded up a bunch of uh, girls that they call the filles du roi. Uh, and, uh, in English, it means the, uh, the daughter of the kings. And he just sent those girls over just to be bred and married, just to help the population. So that's what I say it was like one another form of uh, exploitation. It's not a good, good side of Quebec's history. And then uh, Silverwoods made a joke, like send pretty girls so the guys would stay there. And uh, it's not so much of a joke, it was kind of the point, sadly. The troops met in a climactic clash known as the Battle of the Plains of Abraham. Both the leader of the French, Louis-Joseph de Montcalm, and the British general, James Wolfe, died in the battle. The British then proceeded to occupy New France, and the people living there would never be part of the French Empire again. The war ended yeah. with the Treaty of Paris, which ceded all of Canada to the British. And yeah, that's one of the first reason why Quebec wanted separate. Uh, pizza, you guys got because you're in pain. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you feel better. Uh, hope you feel better. So helpful, pizza. I, I I feel bad knowing you're not going well. Uh, Doctor A Echo, we're doing a uh, with testing this uh, React content channel and we're doing a, a brief history of my province, Quebec, today. We're watching this one video, uh, which I didn't watch before, and so far, it looks to be pretty pretty accurate. And after that, we're gonna, of course, jump into some Project Winter. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, so we're trying to see why th there was some tension. It's Austin. Hello, Austin. Hello there. We're trying to, uh, to, to, to inform ourselves of why they are there was and there might still be tension between Quebec and the rest of Canada that's one of the first reason uh, the Treaty of Paris when uh, there was this battle in the Plain d'Abraham it's called the uh, Plains of Abrams it's in Quebec City and this battle ended up being lost by the French people and British people kind of took over everything and we might know a bit more what happened and why uh, French Canadian were kind of uh, badly treated during that period of time. And King George the Third. Let's just go back just a little here. James Wolfe died in the battle. The British then proceeded to occupy New France, and the people living there would never be part of the French Empire again. The war ended with the Treaty of Paris, which ceded all of Canada to the British. Yeah, France kind of did at this time. You know what? No, not a problem anymore. You want it? Take it. Take it. Quebec is yours now. Canada is yours now. And they just ran away from the problem. And King George III set out to put a government there. This is a significant event in Quebecois history, especially to Quebec nationalists. To them, the Plains of Abraham was when they lost everything, and their oppression by the English began. The Plains are now a park. There's music festivals there and stuff. Seriously, go to Quebec City if you haven't. I was there... Uh... Two months ago, I went to see my friend Sebastien, who lives in Quebec, and we just went to do a big stroll over there. This is so beautiful, though. Uh, you can, I don't know if you see my mouse cursor, there's this uh, huge, huge flunk of stairs, and when you go into downtown here, that's just so beautiful. And on top here, this is the Chateau Frontenac. It's a Frontenac castle, and the planes are on the left side, just the left side of it. Uh, Quebec, in my opinion, old Quebec, because uh, Quebec, there's still this part of Quebec still cut, uh, is still old and looks like it was before, is one of the most beautiful cities I've seen, and I've traveled a lot. I might want to do some uh, live stream just walking the, in the roads of Quebec to, to showcase it to you one day. It's gorgeous. 
the British would rule over Quebec for the next century. Yep. The Quebecois didn't seem to mind a whole lot as long as they were allowed to speak French and practice Catholicism. And allowed to speak French and allowed to practice Catholicism? They were not. See, that's, uh, that's why we come into a problem. They also, to this day, were allowed to keep the French legal system. It was the first time any territory other than Quebec City got the name Quebec. So French legal system, if I'm not, that's just fuzzy for me, but I think it French legal system means that you are innocent until proven guilty. And I think the British system meant you are guilty until proven innocent. Please guys, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I think I remember that was the big difference. All of this formalized in a document in 1774 called the Quebec Act. Another reason the Quebecois got so many concessions is because trouble was brewing down south. In 1775, the American Revolutionary War began, and Quebec was Study in the crosshairs of the American Study military. This. Their goal was to, quote, Most people liberate the French from British rule. During the campaign in Quebec, they even managed to get a few regiments of Quebecois troops to fight for them. The Americans conquered Montreal, but were defeated at Quebec City and forced to retreat. Don't worry. They would try again in the War of 1812. After the Yeah, you guys tried to invade us twice. Just saying. Twice. After the war, Quebec and the rest of Canada became a landing place for many loyalist refugees. Most of them were settled where I am now in what would become southern Ontario. Since they were a sizable English colony in a French-speaking province, they successfully broke off into what would eventually become Ontario, but in this period, called them Lower and Upper Canada. Yeah. This also oddly resulted in the Ontario, only elected was, body in the colonial government in now. Lower Canada, which would later become Quebec. Within it, a national... Just keep in mind, at this time, I don't think it's called Quebec at all. It's just called Canada, and now, at this time, so we, we've uh, got France out of it. Uh, the UK, well, the English people took over, took over all of Canada. There was a war between uh, USA and Ca and the British Empire. Some loyalists from the USA didn't want to be ruled by the British Empire. They fled here to Lower Canada. And, uh, well, you guys all know how it ended up, right? You as well managed to separate from the uh, British Empire. Much before we do, because uh, Canada is still technically on paper a British colony. Nationalist liberal political party called the Pelti Canadien led rebellions in 1837 and 1838. The uprising was driven by an extreme group of them known as the Pelti Patriot. They didn't succeed in much but the imposition of martial law in 1840. I don't like that he calls them, uh, did he call them extremists? Let's just go back because the Patriot, in my view, are not extremists. Maybe I misunderstood. The political party called the Pelti Canadien led rebellions in 1837 and 1838. The uprising was driven by an extreme group of them known as the Pelti Extreme. Why extreme? They wanted the same thing the USA wanted, right? In the USA, when you got rid of the uh, British influence and somehow you took control of your own country. I don't know so much about USA history, but isn't that Independence Day? What What's Independence Day is about? Fud. Hello, Fud. We are doing history lessons today. We are learning about my province, Quebec, and trying to peace out and explain to people why there seem to be still to this day some tension between English people in Canada and French people in Canada. Uh, Pizza says, a a every parent teach uh, conference with the school kid mom says as well, Pizza is a social butterfly. Pizza about Mick. <laughs> hey Zeke, hello there. Could you just be saying the group is extreme compared to the Grunner group? Possibly. But Patriots is, um, Les Patriotes, we call them in French, is, I studied them a lot and I don't see them as uh, more extreme than anybody else. This would mean, in my own view, would mean to say that every uh, UK, I mean, every USA people that wanted to, to separate from the British Empire, which you guys managed to do, which we didn't, uh, would be extreme. I don't think it was extreme. Patriot. They didn't succeed in much, but the imposition of martial Twice law in 1840. It resulted in a lot of reforms and tighter control by the English colonial administration. 
This was also a period when many new immigrants from the British Isles began to arrive in Quebec, creating a sizable Anglophone minority that exists to this day. To further curb the power of the French Canadians, the High Commissioner of Canada, name. Lord Durham, united Lord Upper Durham. and Lower Canada with a single governing body in Montreal. And there you go. That's where the uh, tensions really starts to rise. Uh, Lord Durham uh, is not some a figure that is very much appreciated by French Canadian. You will probably see why. So far, this guy is on the money. Is on point. I like this video. Which then was moved to Toronto after a mob set the seat of government on fire in 1849. Then we get to the big year, 1867. After some negotiation, the colonial provinces of New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Canada joined into a new country called the Dominion of Canada. This was when Quebec finally got the name of Quebec. Quebec. Canada was now a country. Kinda. It took care of its kinda. own affairs, but foreign policy was still under the control of the United Kingdom. And to this day, technically, as I said, on paper, it still is the Queen of England is technically our queen here in Canada. I don't think anyone feels they're under the queen right now. And I think there's a very, very small minority that feels happy about it. But it is... Quebec, the Canadian province, was dominated mainly by the church. Most yeah. hospitals, charities, and French-language schools were run by it. The Quebecois people protested when they detected anti-French oppression in the execution of Louis Riel in the famous Métis Rebellion in Saskatchewan. A future video, I'm sure. I think I want to look at this one. Uh, this uh, the story of Louis Riel will probably do wonders to help us understand the tension between French and English people. Quebec politics often was about trying to gain autonomy for the French population and curb the centralization of Canada. There were a lot of victories, as Canada is a remarkably decentralized country today. Canada's first French-Canadian Prime Minister was Wilfrid Laurier, elected in 1896. He fought the influence of the church in Quebec and dealt with French opposition to Canada's participation in the Boer War. This would be even stronger when Quebec rioted against conscription during the First World War. We did. Uh, apparently, uh, Quebec, again, being different than the rest of Canada, uh, was kind of against conscription. And uh, from what I know, again, that's what I know. I'm just going to be careful about it. From what I know, uh, other parts of Canada were not that against, and they wanted to uh, jump into and go help for the First World War. Hey, folks, I just want to duck in for a second to let you know that Step Back grows through word of mouth. So if there's a friend, family member, teacher, or internet community you know might like a Step Back video, be sure to show them. Canada and Quebec also took a hard hit from the We're Great Depression. It. Quebec saw a massive move to reactionary politics. Quebecois people doubled down on their loyalty to the church, and Quebec nationalism became a traditionalist movement. Is nationalism seen as reactionary? Hmm. Never thought about it. Trying to keep the old ways against a changing world. Ah. The people of Quebec elected a man named Maurice Duplessis for 15 years, yeah. who deepened church and state relations and fought with unions and intellectuals. Because of his doubling down on traditionalist values... Well, I mean, Duplessis did good and it's very bad things. He fought really hard against unions and made it very hard for some uh, for workers. But he was also very against the church, which is... Uh, we don't know, right? He's part of why we have gone away with the church in Quebec and we are a... Uh, like when we say like means that the uh, church is completely removed from uh, any state's influence we have here you're totally free to uh, to have the religion you want there's no doubt about that but there's nothing like uh here about religion exercising exercising any power over the state values quebec was insular abortion was illegal and divorce would be outlawed until 1968. however Baby boomer Quebecois would fight this. During the 1960s, Quebec went through something called the Quiet Revolution. Uh, la Révolution Tranquille, la Quiet Revolution. Uh, okay, so I know you mentioned it occasionally, but how much do you identify with the Quebec heritage? Is it something you identify with closely or just part of your history you watch with? Um, yes and no, Fud. Yes and no. I think we are all part of our time. So as of now... I 
I happen to have been born here, right? So I, I don't think people should be nationalistic, meaning that you randomly were born where you were born and you don't owe anything to that country. That's the way I see it. If you happen, I could have been born anywhere else. What makes this place something I should value over other place? So in that sense, no. However, the history of this place shaped me into who I am today. And the history of where you're born shapes you into who you are today. So I think it's important to know the history and understand why things are happening the way they are. As a French Canadian, it's going to be, I'm going to be very careful here. Very, very careful. French Canadian were for a long time treated like second class citizens by most of Canadians, English speaking Canadians. I don't think it's the case anymore. I, well, and then I don't even know, but even though most of Canadian friends, sometimes they just do little jokes, little digs at it and could be funny. And, but I don't know. I don't know. If I had to vote in the two referendums we had, I would have voted yes to separate. Now I don't think I would do. I'm I'm not sure anymore. But I was too young at the time, so I could not vote. I hope this answers your questions, bud. Uh, well, I do identify with the heritage because it shaped me to who I am. As and I love history, and when I go visit old place, I love to see how people were living before. But the only reason I'm interested is because I was randomly born here. I think it would have been the exact same if I was born in Czechoslovakia or Russia or France. So I don't think I owe anything to Quebec. And I. So sometimes people say, do it for your country. And that's what I don't understand. During this period of reform, Quebec secularized, liberalized, and tied these. I'm just going to go back because we're talking about the uh, Révolution Tranquille, the uh, slow, slow revolution, tranquil. It's. Uh, it's a time where everything changed, but there was no violence. There was no uh, uprising. It just in the 60s. It's where the entire society changed to what it is right now. Gone with the church. Uh, gone with the farms. Gone with the la the Lord systems. Uh, coming into the modern worlds. And it was done without... Mostly, there was some... Uh, he's probably going to talk about the FLQ. The uh, Front Libération du Québec. I think he will talk about it. This is a small terrorist group that we had here. And I'm very excited to talk about this because uh, uh, obviously they're very bad, but it's a, a very, very interesting sort of history. But be besides that, these like 10, 20 people, it was a huge revolution we had and it happened very, very uh, peacefully. Because of his doubling down on traditionalist values, Quebec was insular, abortion was illegal, and divorce would be outlawed until 1968. 68. However, baby boomer Quebecois would fight this. During the 1960s, Quebec went through something called the Quiet Revolution. During this period of reform, Quebec secularized, liberalized, and tied these changes to a new Quebec identity. The province signed an international agreement with Paris, and the Quebecois people protested a visit from the Queen. And of course, yeah. with a spike in nationalism, we get a spike in violence. In 1963, the Front de Libération du Québec... Again, look at that, guys. My history lessons are coming up. I swear to God, you. I swear to God, I did not watch this video before. It's a promise, guys. I find it crazy because everything I say just comes out with it like two minutes later. Uh, so, okay, I want I want to learn more about this. I want you to learn more. I'm going to go back. Just uh, look at Zeke's comment here. I find uh, do it for your country. Uh, nationalism is odd. Yeah. Being happy where you were born, sure. I think nationalism in terms of country helping citizen and worrying about internal... Issues regarding nationalism is something uh, a lot of places need to focus on more. I agree. Uh, nationalism can be bad in lots of ways because it can push you to see yourself as superior. Uh, I s we s kind of see it a lot in the United States. We see it a lot in, in Canada for different reasons. People in Canada seem to think they're above people like from the United States. People from the United States, often, a lot of them, seems to think they're above the rest of the world uh, and I think everybody else will also think they're above everybody else so I don't think it's a uh, it's Canada or an USA thing so in that view nationalism is uh, is not a cool thing however trying to uh, help your fellow people around you 
it's pretty good but i think it's about that's i don't call it nationalism I mean, you just call him a sense of community you will obviously be drawn closer to the people that are physically around you right so it's easier to help people that live in the same town the same in the same block of streets you are because you see them more and when something bad happens to them you can relate a little bit more i'd come as uh, xenophobic now and uh, it seems like yeah it does i nationalism is i i see it as almost xenophobic now my i'm friend with some big nuts <laughs> we call him big nuts pizza uh so yeah just my take should be able to have standard to people who get the uh, genie lottery of being born there at least yep okay i understand yeah what well, you say makes sense but in some view isn't it xenophobic uh not xenophobic but i mean exceptionalism to see yourself as being born and i do it as well i, I do this mistake a lot i'm thankful to be born here in canada more than some place where everything goes wrong but doesn't that tell me that i see canada as a superior place i don't know it's a it's a tough line to go it's a tough line to go and the quebecois people protested a visit from the queen and of course with a spike in nationalism we get a spike in violence in 1963 FLQ. the Fonds de Libération du Québec or the FLQ set off bombs in Montreal this escalated until 1970 when the FLQ kidnapped a cabinet minister and a British diplomat killing the former Prime Minister Trudeau not him his dad I thought we solved this in the last Quebec video imposed martial law on Quebec and invoked the War Measures Act Nationalism, however, was still on the rise. A new Minister of Culture was founded with the goal of preserving French culture. In 1968, the Nationalist Pelti Québécois was elected and still exists to this day. Yep. Support for more nationalism and separatist ideas circulated throughout the late 60s and 70s, resulting in a failed referendum on separation in 1980. In the early 80s, Canada brought home and ratified its own constitution. All nine provinces, except for Quebec, signed except it. for Quebec. Yeah, that's the thing. We brought a constitution back from the uh, from the UK, from the British Empire, and it was signed during a night. And the Quebec Prime Minister was not told. That's what we call the La Nuit des Longs Couteaux, or the Night of the Long Knives, uh, when, again, Quebec people felt they had the short hand of the stick because we had this uh, this big meeting uh, around uh, Ontario, close to the uh, Canada border of Quebec and all the prime ministers of all province were to be were met for a few days and Quebec prime minister was there too and during the night everybody woke up like at two and three in the morning they meet up in secret in the kitchen just to sign the constitution they never told the Quebec prime minister so to this day Quebec has not signed Canada's constitution uh yeah but when mental issues are as bad here or worse than even yeah, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Uh, that's why I'm like, come on, man. Things like GDP don't dictate exactly. Okay, okay. I, I think I misunderstood what you meant. I see. I think I think we're in, we're in agreement. Whenever talks of the Canadian Constitution arose, Quebec status within Canada would become a central issue. In the 80s and early 90s, the Mulroney Progressive Conservative government in Ottawa tried to bring Quebec into the fold with constitutional accords in Meech Lake and Charlottetown, but these quickly broke down. In 1995, yep. there was a second referendum, and it only failed by the slimmest of margins. I have a whole video about this, so if you want more info, go there. Indigenous people today live in small, scattered communities focused primarily on rural areas around the province. Is that also the case in the USA? I think you have... Uh First Nations. Well, we call them First Nations here. I don't know if you guys have a, uh, a word for that. Uh, are they kind of living in separated areas in their um, own kind of land where they they don't have, they're not policed and everything? Uh, I think that seems to have been the solution that was chosen here. Just let just let them have their thing on their end and just don't mean it's, yeah reservation. Okay, you, it's the same thing over there. Okay. Just don't bother them and uh, let them let them try to be happy, I guess. I don't like seeing them, but you know what I mean. Though this isn't always the case. The Mohawk Reserve of Kanawake is 
pretty much a suburb of Montreal. This time. Like the rest of Canada, the treatment of indigenous peoples is a horrific national yep. crime, which yep. we should be pointing out at every possible opportunity. Yes, For we example, do. For example, let's talk about the Oka crisis. In 1990, the... Uh, fun fact, I'm, I'm going to rewind this. Oka. Oka is a city. I was born in a city called Deux Montagnes, which means two mountains. And Oka is... Uh, minutes drive and i went to high school at the uh, oka school so this part i know very well time which we should be pointing out at every possible opportunity for example let's talk about the oka crisis in 1990 the city of oka decided to expand a golf course over a plot of disputed land which belonged to the mohawk nation this was done without a single environmental study or attempt at historic preservation Mohawk community members rallied to defend their territory by blockading access to the land. The Quebec police responded with tear gas and concussion grenades. Stupid. A firefight broke out, and the Mohawk people managed to drive back the police. The RCMP, our federal police, were called in and also overwhelmed. They even called in the military to make sure that golf course on indigenous sovereign land could be built. All of that for fucking golf course. A peace deal was eventually kind of reached. The golf course was canceled and the land purchased by the federal government. This Oka crisis made news around the country. And in a brief and in this country, way too few and far between moment, we saw a little bit of the horrible conditions and violations we inflict on our indigenous communities. Yeah. Hey, Justin, how you liking that oil pipeline? In <laughs> oh, dig, 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 dig. Okay. I like this one. Um, yeah, hello, Bronze. Hello, Bronze. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, current biggest party here in Scotland keeps trying to get a referendum. Uh, was only a few seats from uh, even graduating, therefore able to make. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why we've been very supportive over in Quebec with the uh, Scotland one of the separate. Because uh, we kind of, uh, we, we, we feel the same way and we tried really hard to separate from the British Empire. And we fail that every time. Horrible conditions and violations we inflict on our indigenous communities. Hey, Justin, how you liking that oil pipeline? In more recent times, Quebec has lost a lot of its support for separation. The federal government passed a motion yeah. declaring the Quebecois the status of a nation within Canada. The liberal government in Quebec tried to raise tuition on universities, which resulted in massive protests under something called the Red Square Movement. I remember this well because I was in student government in Quebec at the time. It led to the separatist Parti Québécois getting elected with the province's first female premier, Pauline Marois. I gotta put my cards on the table, I wasn't a fan. What with the trying to choke my small English university out of existence through austerity. See, that's the thing. Why are you playing the victim here? Trying to choke my small university. I don't like this part. I don't like this part. I don't understand why he had to say that. I don't get it. When the history of Quebec is exactly that, is exactly French people getting choked by English, British people trying to just erase them from existence. Uh, I didn't like this part. This video was uh, very good. Was very good coming out as biased here. Well, I don't know if you're talking about me or uh, them. I think we're both very biased, so I'm going to bring that to the table. But I really like, well, I am biased too, but I, 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 I like your sentiments of course. I mean, it's just insensitive when we just went through 20 minutes of how English, the British Empire tried to suffocate French people and trying to get them to assimilate and become English people. Somehow we prevailed. It was pretty good. And then he has to say that. I'm not happy with that Pauline ending. Pauline Marois. I got to put my cards on the table. I wasn't a fan. What with the trying to choke my small English university out of existence through austerity Boo and blatantly racist Islamophobic laws, but whatever. Her government only lasted a couple years anyway. And so, yeah, we come to today. Quebec is having... Just going to say it. Just going to say it. The only prime minister he started shit on was a female one. Just going to say it. Issues dealing with a rise in far-right groups especially those of the neo-Nazi and Islamophobic variety. A white supremacist committed a mass shooting of a mosque in 2017, and Quebec goes to the polls this year with an expected wave of right-wing support. This video is from uh, 2018, by the way. And the, yeah, the most right-wing party won. But yeah, for all it is, 
Quebec is a fantastic part of Canada. Its unique culture and place in the country is core to what Canada is. And so I wanted to tell their story. If there's another okay. province I should do, just ask in the comments. I want to thank 12 Tone for the theme song as well as patrons Don and Keith. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, that was uh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Uh, it was uh, it was better than I was expecting, to be honest. I didn't expect this ending. This is a very little bias ending over there, which, in my view, kind of ruined a little bit of all the good work he did. Because uh, he yeah, retained a lot of that. Did you? All of that? <laughs> all of it. All of it. I don't think you're telling the truth here, pizza. None of it. Oh, so I didn't. I didn't do a good job of. Uh, pointing out the important facts good to know uh well just how do you guys like this is that something you'd like to see more uh it's just something with pretty girls <laughs> you will remember the daughter of the kings yeah exactly exactly so we learned something uh we could do that more i i love doing that i love challenging my own Re remembrance of what I I've learned because as I said before I studied to be a uh, I studied to be a history teacher and I didn't go through with it and now I'm obviously not a history teacher but that's something I wanted to do you like that lots of course awesome I I love doing that too and challenging me and seeing what happened uh, oh oh we have to play Gartic I want to do that <laughs> what is wait what is Gartic to play Gartic. Let me take a look. Gartic. Gartic phone. Oh, this thing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to look at it later on uh, when I'm not streaming. Uh, it seems to be something that's pretty popular. So I'm going to put this in my uh, favorites. And we will definitely be doing that at some point. I think that's it's, it's very awesome. I want to see silver draw. <laughs> okay, so Fat says it, it. So, in your opinion, would you rather see more movement towards independence or more government and independence, which bring the French Canadian to Canadian government? Now that I'm uh, a bit older, I would go for the latter. Uh, Fud, I would have been very much for independence when I was uh, when I was younger. So, just just an example here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you here. I have this uh where is it? Yeah, I have this file there this year. This is the uh symbol of Quebec. Right there. I've got tattooed. So I was pretty much into independence when I was uh a teenager and twenty years old. I think it's uh too too late now. Too late now. Uh all the economic blocks have been made around the worlds. Uh I don't think it's time to run away from them. I think it's time to double down and jump into them. So, I wish independence would have been done 15 years ago when it was time. In my own view, I think it's too late and it will not bring anything good. I could be wrong, just my own opinion. However, yes, uh, Quebec needs even more independence and a way to govern itself as part of Canada the way it wants to be. Because it's... Uh, is independence more of a right-wing right view? Hmm... Hmm, good question. As a whole, I would say mostly right wing, right? But Quebec is not known to be pretty much right wing. We are very much social uh, social democrats. Uh, we have a lot of social nets, which is something we're very proud of. I don't think you'll see any Quebecers that is not proud of their health systems. Uh, the way we're helping everyone, on the way uh, pregnant women get a few weeks of paid leave when they give births, and it's the law, it's by the law, you cannot be forced to come back to work or be threatened just for that. All these little things you had up that makes this place a very left left leaning. So, uh, it's a good question. Because most places I hear that want independence Sometimes it's born of a right-wing view. What do you think, Fud? What do you think? I think it can be both. I'm puzzled by this question. I love it. Uh, I love that you challenge me like that. 